want to discuss how you can calculate percentage change on the TIBA2 Plus calculator. Now, calculating percentage change can be quite useful in many fields, particularly in finance, where we're oftentimes interested in finding out what's the percentage change in the price of the stock, perhaps the percentage change in the dividend. And for a one period model, the percentage change is going to be the price next period, P1, minus the price this period, P0, divided by P0. You can also take P1 and divide it by P0 and subtract 1 from it. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose the price of a stock rises from $110 to $120.22. What's the percentage change? Well, using the formula, 120 and 22 cents minus 110 and then divided by 110 gives us 0.0929 or 9.29 percent. We could also have used the formula where we took 120 and 22 cents and divided it by 110 and then simply subtracted one from it, and we get the same answer, 0.0929. Well, there's a nice function, or there's a nice worksheet here on the calculator, and if you hit second, and right over the five key is a, a little triangle with a percent, that's a delta, so that's a percentage change, and if you hit that, it asks, what's the old price, in this case, 110, Hit enter to record it. Down arrow key, what's the new price? 120 and 22 cents. Enter. And you can compute the percentage change, and we get the same thing, 9.29%. So this is actually rather nice because you don't have to remember how to do this. In fact, it also allows you to put in the number of periods. So let's take a look at another case. The general formula for multiple periods, if you wanted to find the average percentage change over more than one period, then you would take the price in time period T divided by the price in time period 0, and then you would raise it to the 1 over T power, and then subtract 1 from it. And P sub T is the price in period T. P sub 0 is still the price in time period zero. Let's take a look at an example here. If you do this, you would take 120, 22. So let's say this um, in this example, we use the same prices, but suppose that it took two years for the price to rise. So the price in year two is $100, uh, $120.22. The price in year zero is 110 we're going to t raise it to the one-half power, take the square root of it, and subtract one. Let's see if that works out okay. One twenty and twenty-two cents divided by one ten equals, I'm going to take the square root of that, and I'm going to subtract one. And I get a point oh four five four or four point five four percent. Again, we can use our worksheet, and our worksheet here, we have the numbers put in. We have the same old number, old uh, price, same new price, but what we have is we have two periods. So let's put that in, enter, and we'll get back to calculating the percentage return, and again, we get the same number. So this is actually rather nice that you can use this um, this worksheet for calculating percentage change. You can also do it this way. Another way to do it is to use the time value of money function keys. So if we wanted to calculate, for example, uh, for one period, one period, and we had a price of 110 in the first period, you have to make sure you put it in as negative for the present value. The future value was 120 and 22 cents, the fu uh, so we put that in as a future value, and we compute the interest, and we get 9.29%.
and we could also do this for two periods. So this is a, another way to calculate this. And here we can compute the interest rate, 4.54 for two periods. So here are a couple of ways that you can calculate percentage change quite easily. And it comes in quite handy because oftentimes um, we need to know what's an average return or we need to know, for example, what's an average growth rate for dividends. I have a separate video in which I calculate the average um, growth rate of dividends. I did not use this percentage change worksheet, but this is a handy way to do it.